fork in. Okay. All right. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing well. So, little ones are down to sleep. And I have some free time to chat with you all. And I wanted to talk to you today about the emotion of disgust. Now, I have seen quite a number of people keep repeating, women are emotional, women are emotional, women are emotional. Hey, salam, gofrain, may good to see you. I always hear them really kind of bullying women and saying women are emotional. And they keep saying it in this very negative way. So I thought to myself, what would any philosopher do? Well, what are emotions? Let us examine every single emotion and wonder about what it would be like to not have those emotions and the benefits of having those emotions and if men possess those same emotions too. Because I noticed the cliche of whenever someone says women are emotional, they always frame it as if women are always irate, irrational, and unhinged. Okay? And so, disgust is an emotion. It's a strong revulsion to something that is abhorrent, horrendous. And feel free to type in the chat. Gofrain says, we get blocked when we don't have the tools to deal with emotions. So I think from there starts the battle with emotions, function, and life. Good point. And so, disgust, what role has it played for both men and women? For women, disgust is something that helps us to not only keep our surroundings clean concerning hygiene and order, but also when it comes to flavors of food. If you feel disgusted by something like, okay, somebody just was preparing some chicken, it fell on the floor, they pick it up, they cook, continue to cook it. You'd be like, I am disgusted by what you did. And why are you disgusted? Food safety hazard, food poisoning, you name it, right? Another form of disgust in a social environment would be Let's say a funeral director. He has a corpse on the table. He's supposed to be being calm, professional, somber, right? And then he just starts playing with the arms, disrespecting your loved one. You'd feel disgusted at that because you trusted this individual to conduct himself with the utmost composure, right? So you feeling disgusted by somebody playing with the corpse of your family member in the funeral home is useful to society, right? It's a sort of manners, right? Disgust it helps us to have better manners. And if you're at a dinner table and someone just riffs a huge fart, you'd be like, I am disgusted by what you did. They're just riffing and you're like, okay, you can walk away and go fart somewhere else, right? That piggish, boorish behavior at the dinner table would disgust you and you just couldn't handle it, right? Or, you know, you, sh you have roommates, you're sharing one bathroom and someone just leaves their, their number two in the toilet, doesn't flush it. You'd be disgusted by that. Because you'd say, hey, we all use this bathroom. I feel revulsion of what you've left in there. Have some manners and some decency and flush it. Thank you very much. Right? And so, disgust is an emotion that is highly useful. And I think disgust is a, such a strong social barrier, right? that it has helped us to become better people, right? 
Girlfriend says that is a healthy emotion, a signal to keep you away from unhealthy food, as you mentioned, as an example. Exactly. And so, um, uh, a girlfriend says, I'm seriously depressing because of my flatmates, and what shocks me is that they have zero disgust. A good point. Exactly. Very good point. Very good point, you see? And so, when you hear someone say, women are emotional, and we should say, okay, now which emotion are you making fun of? And so I'm going to do, inshallah, multiple posts on YouTube, on my blog, and on my Instagram. Really diving into each emotion and examining them and asking ourselves, why should we be mocking that? And why do you want to look down on people who possess emotions and in one of them disgust, right? Because it is important, especially for us women, to say, hold on, hold on, wait a second. Okay, which emotion are you talking about? When you say emotional, this is an all-encompassing term here. It's a huge umbrella. And when you use it as a weapon, we have to examine this further. Because there is subjective disgust that is more trivial and petty. But then there is serious disgust, which comes into really more social utility. And so, if you didn't have disgust, then you would almost be able to handle too much gore in your life. Too much horror, right? Imagine a ruler who feels no disgust. Right? There's no sense of decorum. Just flat out open cruelty that is beyond the means, beyond the pale. And he just decorates the palace with the most abhorrent trophies of his victims. And you have to walk through there as a bureaucrat. He'd be like, this is disgusting. We can't allow this. This is not professional. It smells bad, it, it's, it's bringing flies, right? We don't need dismembered body parts around the palace. You have a sense of decorum, you have a sense of decency. You'd be quite terrified of a ruler who has no sense of disgust, right? Now, disgust is an emotion. So you have to examine, where is this applied? Who uses it? When is it useful? When does it come into play? And how do you go about this? Okay? And so, right now, that's what I'm trying to do. A sort of live philosophical section. Right? Because I think disgust is important. For women to possess as an emotion. Right? Asiya says, what brought on this topic tonight? Well, I've been meditating upon it in my mind. About why is it bad to have emotions? Why are women talked down to? And why is the word emotional used as a weapon? To belittle, demean, and push aside women. And is it a good thing if women turn off that emotion? And if you were purely logical, right? If you're programming a robot, they don't have emotions. And the military robots just have to be commanded to go ahead and do the function, right? That's why they're going to be used in war. So as you're groveling, begging... You're holding your baby, you're holding your grandma, and those robo-dog robots are coming for you. You'll wish there was a human behind that controller because you're pleading for your life. Well, may, maybe emotionally move the person behind the control of the robot to spare you. And again, if you want a cold calculating force you're going to get a very dystopian world. Rashid says, emotions are the outcome of weak thoughts. 
Disgust is not a weak thought. You see, that's the kind of person I'm getting at here. Emotions are seen as weakness. How is having disgust a weakness? If you're eating dinner and someone poops on your table, you're going to feel disgust. Should you not feel disgust? So if everyone goes around pooping on each other's tables, that would spread disease. Because feces has a high rate of disease transmission. So if you didn't feel disgust at people giving dookies on your table, what justification would you have? Well, I'm disgusted by this. We should stop this behavior, right? Feeling the emotion of disgust prompts one to action. They, they, they make you say, hey, hey, hold on wait a second, right? They go hand in hand. Now, if I'm in a room filled with robots and I do a dookie, the robot, he's not going to feel disgusted. It's just going to sit there and wait until it's coded to go sweep it up, right? So it, it's interesting how people always frame emotions as weaknesses, as a, as a defect, and that you're not supposed to have any. So that's why I'm going to go through every single emotion and break it down. So that way, whenever a pompous, snarky, snobbish person tries to shame you for emotions, we're going to pause back and say, which emotion? Okay, why shouldn't I have that? Why? What is the utility of it? And break it down because that's what uh, we should do. And especially as someone who loves philosophy, right? A lot of people say things, but they don't really think about what they're saying. They think insulting emotions... It's a sort of power play, right? Uh, Girlfriend says, Oh, surprisingly, those flatmates come from countries where nearly everything is automated. One of them told me we're not allowed to cry, and since the age of seven, he has not cried until this day. Oh, wow. Asya says, says It sounds misogynistic to claim that women are too emotional. A lot of people say that. Deba says, emotions are supposed to lead you to truth. Very interesting point to mention that. Very. Uh, truth, yeah, because when you feel disgusted by something, there's a truth behind it. Why are you feeling this emotion? You know, now having a strong stomach, that is different, right? Some people have a weaker stomach. They see, you know, a... Uh, a bunch of lions eating the intestines of a wildebeest, they're like, I can't handle this. You know, this is disgusting, they would say. Whereas someone who lives in the safari, someone like me who likes watching nature videos, eh, like, it's all right. You know, there is a dirty, stinky form of disgusting, and then there's, like, uh, political disgust, right? For example, if you see... A really fat man in a suit and he's just eating and eating but like his butler is really skinny and says can I eat some leftovers he's like no and he's got like food on his face and he's just so piggish and snobbish and ho he's like hoarding food gluttony right we feel disgust when we see gluttony right and so when you see somebody who is just being a glutton, you feel disgust, and they're not being kind, sharing some of their food with their servant. It's like you see a feeling there, you know what I mean? Raphael says, when you said about those who says that women are emotional, did you have some groups like Red Pill in mind? Yeah, I did, yeah. But I also noticed some women saying this as well. They say like, well, we're emotional, so... uh if you don't like X, Y, and Z, it's because you're emotional. And so I'm hearing these words, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, we have to examine what these words mean because these phrases are becoming like mantras. And if we're repeating this and repeating this, what is this doing to our psyche, and what does that mean, and what behavioral outcome is going to be extracted from such repetitive thoughts? And so I just started doing a deep dive on 
what emotions are. Rashid says, emotional people are easily fooled. Okay, disgust is an emotion. How am I fooled by disgust? I don't think that if I see a bucket filled with vomit and dead flies and I feel a sense of disgust, I don't think that leads me astray. Right? Your disgust tells you, do not eat that. Do not go near that. Safety can come from feeling a sense of disgust. You're in a room with some, let's say, business executives. And you are about to do a business deal, but everybody's having some appetizers and whatnot before you start talking. Then you hear people, some of them saying, oh yeah, you know, I totally just did x y and z to this girl and then i gave her money for an abortion and like i just totally blocked her on instagram and didn't call her like imagine like a really arrogant guy who's just talking so gross about women and about um, he's just obsessing over money and he's just coming off as really slimy you'd be you'd feel a sense of disgust at his character you'd be like ugh, this guy is do we really want to do business with a guy like that? Like, you feel a sense of disgust. You know, the way his tongue is making you feel a sense of revulsion, a sense of grossness, right? So, is that person who's listening to an individual like that being easily fooled? I'd say no. You, Him or her, whomever is this is happening to, Feeling a sense of disgust, which is an emotion, is powerful. Varok says, it can go both ways if you're disgusted at things that are good for you. Yes. And that's the fun part, thinking about, right? So what would, something that is good would be like, kids with cold medicine. Like, oh, I don't want to eat it, it doesn't taste good, because it doesn't taste like bubblegum or grape. And you'd be like, you have to take this medicine because something that has to happen. Right? And you're like, oh, I want to. Like, kids, if you don't, it doesn't taste sweet, they don't want to take it, you know? And sometimes the kids, they go like, Bleh, I'm going to throw up. And you're like, it's just cough medicine. Right? So that'd be a good example. Another good example of misplaced disgust would be, let's say, a vegan. They don't like watching an animal be processed from start to finish. Right? They don't like that feeling of watching an animal and the mess that happens in the slaughterhouse, right? Now, the worker at the slaughterhouse is like, I'm used to this, I'm desensitized, what's the big problem here? Whereas the vegan's like, oh, I need kale, you know, I can't handle this. And then they want to ban uh, people from eating meat or they want to push mock meats, fake meat, right? Which is actually happening, which, you know, it's a huge problem. I once had a conversation with a vegan who said that, you know, beef products should not be sold anymore and uh, meat should be abolished. And I said, wouldn't that make cows go extinct? Right? Wouldn't, if you don't, people are not going to keep cows if we can't use them for leather, fur, dairy, or meat because to feed a cow is expensive, right? No one's just going to have a cow as a pet. Some maybe do when the cow retires, you keep it around, when it can't give you milk anymore, right? You feel sorry for it, you just can't eat it. But for the most part, fat, juicy steaks are waiting in that on that cow, right? That muscle tissue. And so I said to this person, so you'd rather cows go extinct than we eat them? She said, yes. It's like, wow, so you won't let us eat them because you're disgusted to see us slaughter them, but you'd rather them go extinct so that they, you don't have to feel disgusted anymore at seeing people eat meat. You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> that would be a good example of misplaced disgust, right? Girlfriend says, we're going to have more animals than humans. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how they want it. I'm serious. I think that's how the vegans, they keep calling humans parasites and so, you know. I think that they fetishize the earth. They anthropomorphize the earth as their mother, which is quite bizarre. Master says, over-emotional is not expected by men. I may accept when seeing a woman disgust because they eat raw goat liver. But when my friend pretend disgusted, I will smash him. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Okay. 
That's a good point. There were some red pill men who said it's disgusting to see a woman give birth. And I made a funny video where I was like, imagine a soldier on the field who has to carry his fallen friend and the leg is like all disheveled and open. If the soldier cannot pick up his comrade because the leg is like, you know, bleeding out and he's disgusted, so he just leaves his comrade in the field because he doesn't have a strong stomach and he doesn't want to get blood on his uniform, we would have a problem, basically. Another example is people who work on farms, right? They see a lot of uh, disgusting things that animals do, right? I mean, dogs alone do some really funny things, but we need people to have a sense of like, okay, we see they see it's disgusting, and they correct the behavior, and they have to keep doing their job, right? Especially when they're breeding animals or an animal is struggling to give birth. They have to have a strong stomach. They feel a sense of disgust, but they have to have a strong stomach. So I argued, basically, in a comedic way, I gave these bunch of examples of a man who can't handle a, a woman giving birth with a little bit of blood or whatever is a bit fragile. Is, is His disgust is misplaced. And he's lower in the ranking of male dominance because if his stomach is so sensitive just at a simple woman giving birth, he's not cut out for the battlefield, he's not cut out for the slaughterhouse, uh, he's not cut out for actual manual jobs besides being a social media mind, right? And so it's interesting you point out the raw liver and stuff like that. Very important, very important. Uh, Dubois says, not to go off subject, do you plan to return to Hamza's show in the near future? I don't really know what we, you mean Hamza Hamza's den. I don't really know what we would discuss. I mean, uh, disgust. Uh, I don't know what we would discuss. Uh, I'm not going to bash Christians, you know. I don't need... I like to talk about theology. I don't want to argue... With people, I'll argue about politics, stuff like that, but I'm not going to argue with a Christian. And, you know, I, I have, I like to study the polemics and stuff like that of Christianity. I, I like to study theology and philosophy, and I'd rather discuss instead of just debate. And I wouldn't debate a Christian until I had a degree in theology. In fact, I just got a new uh, McAfee Study Bible, uh, which is has a bunch of maps, and it's a really cool, updated, like, informative theology student Bible. Uh, so that's cool. So, I don't think so. I'm not Hamza's friend. Uh, Gofrain says, And it drives me nuts when peop when they think plants don't feel pain when they cut them and eat them. Scientific proof, in fact, they do feel they just don't scream when they cultivate and eat. <laughs> yeah. Eat Mubarak, Anas. Yes, exactly. Let's see. Yeah, and so I think it's very important for us to look at, you know, how disgust can save our lives. And imagine a doctor. If a doctor was easily disgusted at doing open heart surgery, we would be in some serious trouble. I understand that, right? He needs to be able to have a strong stomach to go and dig into your body, right? However, I want you to think of the flip side. We as humans are allowed to eat meat. Elites now are trying to push bugs on us. Our natural revulsion to wanting to eat bugs is, a sign, is is good for us. Why? Because we are not letting the elites to starve us by feeding us bugs. Right? You see a bowl of crickets, I don't care how much cheese you put on it, I don't care if you dip them in chocolate, I'm disgusted. I'm not eating bugs. Now, I'll eat some raw meat, some steak tartare, with a nice quail egg on top, with some salt, shallots, garlic, and pickles on a nice crostini, yeah, I'll eat some raw, organic, grass-fed, pasture-raised, non-GMO, sustainable beef. Believe me, I'll eat that. However, you're not going to get me to munch on a tarantula, 
I'm not eating no potato bugs. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not eating bowl of worms with soy sauce. I think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, was smart, obviously. Allah is the most wise. Allah put dis disgust in us as an emotion. So it has to have utility and it has to be reined in. And so what men get disgusted by is obviously different than women. Women should feel disgusted by certain behaviors that other women do, right? When a social aspect of disgust, it's like if a woman is married. Oh, 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 oh no, I can't give too many of my own. People get... People keep telling me don't give real examples of things I've seen uh, because it's exposing sins or whatever. But I'll just try to speak in generalities. If you are somewhere, you see a married man flirting uh, with a with a woman, right? So he's trying to commit adultery. You feel a sense of disgust. You're like, oh, what a trash guy. Like, I just saw his wife. Like, literally in a day. And there he is. And then he goes in the car with the chick. You'd be like, Ugh, what a pig. I'm disgusted by that behavior. And then you go tell his wife. Right? So, disgust, when it comes to that emotion in women, it helps us keep our community strong. Because we see something gross, we go like, that's gross. Right? Now, when it comes to clothing, that's something interesting. Uh, because women, when it comes to clothing, can feel a sense of disgust. I think it's disgusting when there's very lewd dress codes in some schools. I think a uniform is better. Right? Because there's it's some of the clothing you're just like, uh, what's going on here? Are we in a nightclub or are we at school? Okay. Now, some feminists, they'd be more disgusted by uh, forced modesty, they'd call it. And now we're at a crossroads when it comes to just female clothing. So, we'd have to have a discussion about which emotion is correct for the school dress code. Disgust does matter, right? And... Modesty versus lewdness. Forced modesty, they'd call it. They feminists feel disgusted. Me seeing lewdness, I'm like, this is gross. The Where are these children's mothers? They're going to class like that. What is going on here? Right. You know, the way we carry ourselves, the demeanor, can evoke a sense of disgust. And others can be disgusted by, you know, reputation. Someone has a horrid reputation. They sit at the table with you. You're disgusted. You know, this is important because it also affects finances. Some people, when they're disgusted, they won't sit at the table with somebody. Right? So imagine you're a hotshot. You are going to do some type of real estate deal with some tycoon. And you sit down at the table and people are snapping photographs and whatever. And then you realize there's this total degenerate. Like, yeah, he has money, whatever, but he's a total degenerate, uh, extremely vulgar. And when he sits down at the table with you, you're disgusted by that individual, but also what people will say about you by sitting next to an individual because who you sit next to sometimes can come across as a as an endorsement. And so your disgust for that individual can save you from a bad business deal and ruining your reputation. Now, some people say it's not personal, it's just business, but sometimes disgust helps you see that it should be personal and it can't always just be business because who you do business with you it means you're helping them economically and if you're helping them economically then you're helping them to succeed and spread whatever they are upon right and so feeling a sense of disgust can help you to spend your money in a better way this you, you vote with your dollar right if you're disgusted by a company 
you will use your money in a better way. So having the emotion of disgust is highly useful in making the marketing companies bow down to the public will. Why do we see such a weakening of religious values in marketing? Why is because people were desensitized and have become more lewd and lustful and they don't feel disgust anymore about sex being used to advertise everything. You see what they did? They eroded religious people's tolerance. They like they conditioned people to not feel disgust when they see a giant booty on a billboard for no reason. They appealed to the lowest common denominator. And men were taught to be aroused by lewdness instead of respecting and honoring people for better behavior when it came to women and what happened. Because men stopped feeling disgusted by public lewdness, women started changing in order to get attention. Now you have the rise of you know, women selling provocative images of themselves for five bucks. Because they think that's the new currency, that's the new way to find Prince Charming. They don't they can't understand the hypocrisy of men when they want the Madonna whore complex where yeah, you want a virgin wife, but you're staring at women who are everything but that and the women don't understand. Well who should it be? Should you be the Madonna or should you be the Cardi B, right? And so when men stopped feeling disgust, the women followed and stopped feeling disgust at other women who would show their bodies. And that led to social decay. Now, a, a lewd liberal would say, actually, we find you uh, modest types to be prudish and disgusting because you judge people you see and so we have two competing philosophies of the emotion of disgust in society just when it comes to dress codes and so it's important okay the male version of that would be oh you go to a business interview you're in silicon valley you're the guy who's going to interview you expects you to shower comb your hair Make your beard look nice and oiled. You're going in looking good. Right? You're smelling good, looking good, feeling good, acting good. If you show up like you just woke up out of bed, you got the you know how you get the mattress imprint in your hair? You don't have deodorant on, your shoes ain't even tied, your jeans, they don't even look fresh pressed. You don't look good at all. He's gonna be disgusted by your slobness, by your demeanor. He's going to be like, get the hell out of my office. He's going to tell you. Or you don't get the job. Just I'm disgusted that you disrespected me by coming into my office, not even dressed for the circumstance. Right? So men do judge other men and in job interviews quite excessively. And if you have disgusted your job interviewer, guess what? You ain't getting a job. You're not going to get it. Right? And so the emotion disgust is used in the business world, the fashion world, in marriages, right? If your wife feels disgust by just thinking about you, guess what? Your marriage ain't gonna last very long. And you have to examine what are you doing to make her feel disgusted? It's a habit that you're doing, okay? If a man is gonna marry a woman, she's doing something that has disgusted him, he may not like a thing, as we know, and he can get over that, right? But maybe there's another thing, and another thing. He tells her she doesn't listen, it's just another, and another, and another, and he's like, you know what, I just find you to be disgusting. Now there's a permanent image in his mind of you being disgusting. And that is an emotion that causes divorce. So, the divorce could be for better or for worse. But still, the emotion disgust affects a marriage affects a man's and wife's relationship and both the men and women feel that emotion so if you're saying you're being emotional if a woman's complaining about hygiene like let's say you know her husband he got pee on the toilet seat he didn't clean it up and she's disgusted she goes to him you didn't clean up the pee 
Should he say, you're being an emotional woman? Uh, sure. She may have her tone a bit loud. But let's say she says it in a very stoic manner. Oh, honey, I'm very disgusted by uh, you peeing on the toilet seat and you didn't lift it up. It's a very common thing in relationships. And he goes, honey, you're just emotional because you're a woman. You'd be like, what? Don't be a dirty dog. Just... Go get a Clorox wipe, wipe it up, please don't do it again, right? Now, is she being emotional because disgusted is an emotion? By complaining, I'd argue no. She's not being this negative cliche of emotion. Now, let me give you another example. I found out in my kid's school, they read a particular book about an individual who was a boy who transitioned... Uh, to be a eunuch. Let's put it that way. I was horrified. I was disgusted. When I calmly complained to the teacher about what had occurred. Uh, I had a sense of disgust in me. And that person could not comprehend my disgust. But that strong feeling of disgust led me to think, you know what, maybe I should try to learn something about homeschooling. Maybe, you know, people are really correct in saying that the public school system is beyond repair. It's become a political weapon. So that emotion of disgust got me to thinking about a better situation for my child's educational pathways. You see? So another example would be how... The emotion of disgust is useful. Imagine you're walking down New York City, Oakland, San Francisco, wherever, Philly. And there's just a homeless person who is just zonked out of their mind on fentanyl. And just uh, walking around with no undies and newspaper stuck in their butt. You'd be disgusted by that behavior because kids are seeing it. And you would demand action from your city council the emotion of disgust led you to seek political change and to hold your representatives accountable for the open indecency in your environment so if someone is mocking emotion you must ask them well hello why is that bad you see, so the emotion of disgust really came into play. Raphael says, yes, I was thinking the same thing you said right now, that emotion can save our lives. Good point. Master says, disgust might be inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to warn you from something or not to continue that relationship. Even more of a solid point. Exactly. You see, so oh, that's a great point. Disgust is an emotion, and it has spiritual utility, it has financial utility, and it has marriage utility and parenting, right? Think about it. If you had a toddler who was constantly taking their diaper off, and they had accidents on the floor, you'd be disgusted by that behavior. You'd be like, you can't be doing that. Stop it right now. You know, go on the potty. Don't be doing that. Stop it right now. You'd be disgusted, right? So when it comes to parenting a young human mind, well, it's important to recognize that the emotion of disgust is something that you hope your children can have, but in a healthy, functioning way, right? And so when we say, you know, not necessarily mean you us watching or thinking about this deeply philosophically at the moment but when we hear you know you're being emotional right now you're just emotional whether you be man or woman we should pause and say name the emotion okay now what would it be like in a world where the emotion discussed didn't exist i mean Everything would be bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. Think about think about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told men 
to not go near their women during their menses. Think about a man who has adapted to not doing that versus the one who jokes about being a vampire. You'd feel a sense of disgust, wouldn't you? Right? Think about how we do we do think about how Allah commands us to do so many good things concerning hygiene and if you don't do that and you saw somebody openly flaunting them not doing it, you'd feel a sense of disgust. And that sense of disgust helps you to differentiate your values from theirs, right? You can tell a lot about a person by what they find disgusting and what they don't find disgusting. Regardless of it being uh, emotional, financial, hygienically, you name it. You'd be like, hmm, you know, that person's values cannot be reconciliated with mine. Therefore, I'm not going to hang out with that person or associate with that individual further. So the emotion discussed is highly useful and we shouldn't mock it and we shouldn't degrade people for having it and we should never seek to have that abolished. And so we have to be mindful of what we find to be disgusting and not disgusting. Uh, Freud says, having uh, intimacy during period can enhance the probability of disease transmission. Exactly. And diseases are disgusting, right? If you're a doctor treating it, obviously you have to uh, have a strong stomach. But when we see disease... Right? We feel gross. We're like, I want the disease out of me. That's what we say. And so if someone's doing an action that transmits diseases, we find that to be disgusting. You know? Um, Master says, I believe disgust is a considered factor in physiognomy. Is that what you mean? Isn't that the word or how someone looks and how someone behaves? They'll look that way? Okay, let me explain that. Uh... Isn't that where, like, okay, if someone's really gross, they look really gross. Like, Wormtail and Harry Potter. He was a rat. And then when he transformed himself out of the shape of a rat, he looked very ugly with, like, a long nose and, like, nails. And he was a, a rat to Harry Potter's mom and dad, which led Voldemort to find their house. He betrayed his friends. So I think that's a, a fictional, mythical, whatever example of that particular standpoint of physiognomy. People talk about that as well when it comes to criminals. I've heard a lot of people talk about, you know, oh, the ears, if they're this way and someone just looks down like, uh, they are like that. I, I think... Mr. Burns from The Simpsons is like a billionaire villain and he looks like a Rothschild banker. So people like, oh, if you are gluttonous, you'll look this way. If you're greedy, you'll look that way, right? Hey, you sound like him, Suge. Um, disgust is, Suge says, disgust is one of the reasons why some people, when they see vomit, they immediately vomit. Or it triggers the gag reflex. Important thing in society. Exactly. Gofrain says, I'd feel honestly frustrated if a male is disgusted from me having the monthly hormonal disorder. Do you think it's an emotional distortion? Um, uh, from having the monthly hormonal disorder. You mean like when you're feeling emotional and he finds you to be gross for simply just having the natural process, I would say, is uh, irrational. No one should be mad at you for your monthly cycle. But they shouldn't both part both people should not touch each other in that way while that cycle is happening was my point um i used to hear in high school people joking about it so they had no decency in that area and the men who didn't mind were more gross than the men who did mind you know what i'm saying john smith says why wife sometimes file divorce with no reasons do women sometimes don't like husband there's always a reason for divorce. No one does it for no reason. You may perceive it as not a good enough reason, but for someone to bother with divorce 
in the first place, there's a reason. They probably just don't want, if, if they didn't tell you, then they just didn't want to argue with you and they just want to go about their life. But everyone has a reason. Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? Things can appear like they don't have a reason, but they always do. Regardless of if they share that reason with you or not. But if you fear divorce uh, over no reason, know there's always a reason. So how do you solve that? By having good communication in your relationship. And some things can be repaired and some can't. You know, sometimes you just gotta let that bird fly away. But you try to keep it as long as you can. Girlfriend says, yes, the biological thing. That's sad. That's sad if someone is discriminating you simply because of the biological thing. That's weird. Because that actually means you're fertile, right? That you're, everything is in working order. I know a chick once who didn't get her cycle uh, because she worked out so much in the gym. She had fertility issues. It was quite sad. Uh, she was in my my human biology class or something. Some it was years ago. It was like six years ago. Well, yeah. But again, I want to do a whole series about every emotion because I'm I'm starting to like. The, when I hear this this phrasing, women are emotional, it's like sticking in my ear. And it'll like bother me. I'm like, huh. You know? And then I, I think of, isn't that what men complain about feminists? That they're more cold-hearted? Ruthless? Ball crushers, they call them? You know? Look at the fictional character Daenerys Targaryen. I mean, Game of Thrones has, I skip past all the haram kissing crap. I really love the battles. But let's let us examine for a second the character Daenerys Targaryen, Khaleesi, right? She was really soft, emotional, and nice in the beginning. Then she became harder as she struggled and lost her friends, right? Okay. Um, Fruit Boy says, where you live in the U.S.? Pay attention. Stop asking questions like that. And Daenerys... Towards the end, she uses her dragon, Drogo, to flame the city up. Jon Snow looks at her and sees her eyes to be just completely dragon queen, cold, right? He holds her for the last time and says that it has to be a world filled with mercy. You know, that you have to have mercy in the world. And her dragon burning down King's Landing showed she didn't have mercy for the children. It's a very smart scene because John, when he saw, when he says, little children, little children burned. And Daenerys says it was necessary, you know. Uh, this was an example of what happens to a woman who can slowly break down her emotions and be just cool. Uh, Master says, cool, you still remember all the circumstances? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know how there's Star Wars fans? And there's Pokemon fans, there's Dragon Ball Z fans, there's uh, Grand Theft Auto fans. I am a Game of Thrones fan, like you would not believe. I mean, I've read all the books. I've probably watched it hundreds of times. I participate in pages that talk about it. I'm a huge, gigantic nerd of that show like inside and out girlfriend says well your interpretation of the simon is spot on <laughs> thanks this is... and so why does Jon snow end up putting the sword in daenerys the woman who he she almost had power over him and he everyone was wondering is he gonna submit to her beauty right because is he going to be overpowered by her allure? But what turned him off to her? Because do you, if you remember, he told her in the beginning, if you're going to burn... Because remember they were talking about Cersei Lannister and about how cold Cersei Lannister is, 
right? He says, well, if you're going to, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but if you're going to do that, you're basically just more of the same. And what did Tyrion, say, you know, get Daenerys to say? I didn't come to burn, turn cities to ash, right? And she ended up being like the Mad King, her father. And what did Jaime Lannister put a sword in the back of the king for? Um, because he was using wildfire on his subjects and he kept going insane and saying, burn them all, burn them all, right? So, Cersei, uh, she, you know, was a cold woman, but in she, she, you know, she did things to protect her children and her family, right? So her madness was different, but she was cold. But she did have emotions because she loved her children, right? But Daenerys, when she lost two dragons, she lost Khal Drogo. She was heartbroken by Jon Snow. She lost Missande. Jor is dead. Uh, now, she says, let it be fear. Do you remember when she said that? Let it be fear. When Jon Snow refused to give her, like, like I'm not going to be with you in that way, she was like, she pulls away and says, okay, then let it be feared because you can be loved or feared as a ruler. So she chose the sort of um, strong-armed way, right? And so if when, and that made her scary, remember? She was the leader of the Dothraki and the Unsullied. What were the Unsullied? You got to pay attention to the symbology here. The Unsullied were warriors who... Uh, for their final creed, had to have a they had to terminate a baby right in front of its mother and pay its mother a coin. The the unsullied were brutal warriors and they just obeyed orders. The Dothraki, they were they enjoyed doing what they did on the battlefield. Remember when Jaime Lannister said, you know, killing us was sport for them, right? So. There was different types of armies in Game of Thrones. Each one had its strengths and weaknesses, right? The Unsullied were never able to have children, right? Because they were all eunuchs. And so Jamie and Braun, they were Braun of the Blackwater, were like, well, what do men fight for? Women and gold. And what do the men spend the gold on? Women. So the Unsullied can't have, <laughs> they can't have kids. So what's, they're just, they are just soldiers and they've been brutalized from a young age to be soldiers. So who was following Daenerys? Uh, the Dothraki, who valued strength and power only, and the Unsullied, who were fearless. So if she wanted to maintain their loyalties, she had to be fearless. She had to be so strong. So whenever someone says you know women are emotional it's like well do you want a Daenerys Targaryen right do you want someone be the mad queen to someone to slowly turn off their emotions in a sense and so remember Daenerys felt disgust when she said you took a mother you took a babe from its mother and gave her a coin and then the slave master says basically no, the coin isn't paid to the mother. It's paid to the slave's owner. Remember when she crucified the masters, she was disgusted by their behavior towards their subjects. Right? How on her way to Marine, she saw the rebellious slaves crucified along the path. And she was disgusted when she made herself look at them. When... Sir Barristan the Bold was like, oh, I'll, I'll, dry, I'll take the horses ahead. We'll take down the bodies. And you won't have to be disgusted by looking at them on the road to Marine. And she was like, no, we'll look at every single one. So there you have an example of, yes, you're disgusted by the actions of the tyrants. What she perceived to be tyrannical. But then she forced herself to look at it so she could have strength and not feel disgust at what she was going to do to the masters, which was to crucify them. And then remember, Sir Barristan tells her, it's it's easy to see your enemies as this or that, but you're supposed to have mercy. And she was said no, basically, that she will solve uh, injustice with justice, right? And you have to have, basically that gets down to the feeling of 
you have to have the stomach to do what you have to do when it comes to war. And so that in a larger example goes off into topics of when it comes to war, war crimes make people disgusted. So what do you do? You know, when it comes to atrocities in war that go beyond the pale, people get afraid and say, well, we can't do too much cruelty, right? Um, that's why the founding fathers of America, they didn't, you're not allowed to do cruel and unusual punishment to people in America. They found that to be disgusting when different forms of punishment can become too cruel and that allowing a society not to feel disgust at too cruel of a treatment would create a very unstable, unsafe, and tremendous tyranny. So they wanted people to feel disgust about certain punishments for criminals so that they wouldn't exceed the limits. And in Islam, we also have limits of what we're allowed to do to criminals. Even if what we want to do is going to be more excessive than that, because sometimes it can be a bit much. Now, you can get into semantics of, of the guillotine and whatnot, or hangings and such. I mean, it, it, I mean, the liberals, they get disgusted at the electric chair. I don't. Depends on who's in that chair and who, if it's an innocent man, okay, that's disgusting. He shouldn't be electrocuted. But if it's a monster, fry him like a piece of chicken. Go right ahead. I'm not going to feel disgust. You see? So there's something to think about. Um, Muhammad says, we live in a desensitized society. No shame. No disgust. Nothing is forbidden. I feel like we are in a runaway train. Good point. Exactly. When people stop feeling the emotion of disgust, it's going to lead to problems. Right? That is why I'm mentioning that it is important to analyze what is under this umbrella term emotions. Master says, by the way, do you still have some states applying the death penalty? Yeah, we still have a couple. It's a very slow process. You know, they're allowed to appeal and appeal. And sometimes it takes forever to get them out of this world. And the liberals have made it to where, you know, they won't be executed for like, you know, 15, 20 years. So, it's a shame. Such a shame. John Smith says, When I see women in the U.S. and EU countries raising voices on husbands and screaming in public arguments, it feels disgusting, really. But also used to be females more care in front of people. That's an interesting point. Great point. Social etiquette can have a sense of revulsion, right? The way in which someone carries themselves. So women, like I get disgusted when the feminists rip off their shirts, write swear words on their chest, and they're just, you know, pouring red paint all over themselves. I'm disgusted by that. That's not how you handle a conversation. It's, it's, it's bizarre, right? But to them, they want to shock chalk. They want to just penetrate your mind with obscenities. And that's where you have to be like, what's going on here? This is disgusting, right? And so they would argue, well, there's no right way to protest. Well, you can do something creative, something very unique, informative. There's better ways. But, you know, those types, it's very hard to reason with them. But I definitely see what you're meaning. John Smith says, death row, very, very long process in the U.S., sadly. I've been watching a lot of true crime documentaries about certain criminals, especially the criminology aspect, you know, that highlights the psychological profiles of individuals, behaviorists and whatnot, and how they break down these criminals' minds. And you're like, why are they even on earth anymore? Let's get rid of them. They cannot be reformed. I don't want them ever out of a prison. Let's not give them water. Like, why do they hear still? Put them on death row. Let's, let's make this process faster. A chicken is killed faster. Come on. But liberals make it very hard. John Smith says, 30 years waiting in the death row queue. Yeah, it, it's bizarre. Bizarre. You know, but one day, hopefully, 
we can repeal all the liberal policies and their political philosophy will not be around anymore. Now, I do have one friend who says, well, it's, 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 it's worse if they get to be in solitary forever and then they go nuts. To me, I say like, well, now they're trying to take, take away solitary confinement and human rights people are getting in the way and saying you can't treat them like that. And they're getting more privileges, you know. People can learn to adapt to their environment, you know. Sure, they'll always suck in prison, but some people, they are very adaptive, you know. So, we might as well get rid of them. 304 Legends. Sorry to be off topic, but have you watched the Great Reset documentary by Imam Gadzi? It's very scary. He uploaded it recently. No, I don't know who that is. Hmm. But the 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 reset topic uh, has been discussed at length. Yeah, I've seen a lot of different people talk about that topic. Master says, 30 years, the criminal will be killed when he becomes grandfather. <laughs> yeah, it's absurd. Liberals are very soft on crime. You know, they're very soft on crime. Amir Khan says... Advance happy Eid, old fitter, sister, may Allah bless you. Thank you. May Allah reward you. Hope your Eid is excellent. So, with all the things we discussed today, well, tonight rather, because it's nighttime where I am, about the emotion of disgust and its different applications and expressions within our society, within our psychology and history, I, I hope you, you know, walk away with a unique view on the emotion of disgust and maybe you can brainstorm tonight what you think about it what does it mean for you and how has disgust saved you in certain circumstances by the formation of a law and were some times where you felt disgust where you shouldn't have and be prepared for the other streams i do where i will be discussing inshallah all the emotions. So I'm going to be thinking about it, philosophizing on it, and I really hope that this inspires people to ask that person who's saying it, what do you mean by emotional? And we should stop using the umbrella term because we are pretending that emotions are bad and that only women feel it and that men don't feel those same things, right? Master says it's 7, 10 a.m. in Saudi. Wow. Totally different time zones. That's right. That's pretty early. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's early. All right, fam. By the way, if you'd like to join my blog, it's www.subscribestar.com slash Milhan Archive. I hope to see you there. And I post a lot of very interesting things on there, random topics. It's more personal blog. Um, you know, getting into culinary arts and you know, stuff like that, so, and in grammar, and, you know, updates about what's going on in my world, and so, it's very fun to join, it's only five bucks, so, consider. Kofrain says, since the moment of Sahur, I crave for some sleeing, but could not resist that YouTube notification of yours, and I always know it's worth it. Love, now I'm on my way to work. All right, sister, thanks. Always glad to see you here. You've been around for almost three years now, I think. So I always enjoy you being in the chat. Um, Muhammad says, thank you, sister, for your efforts to enlighten us. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate everyone who participated. And I value all of your opinions and your contributions. So take care and see you next time.